Hello and welcome to Voices in the Wilderness. I'm Reverend Maria. Jesus said to go out into every nation of the world and proclaim the good news. That is the main goal of Voices in the Wilderness. Friends, life is not promised to anyone. So today, if you hear the voice of God calling you, do not harden your heart. Repent and accept Jesus as your Savior. He is the way out of the darkness. He is the truth that brings light, and He is life itself. Our scripture of the day is Exodus chapter 12, verse 22. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lentil and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Joining us again for part two of this interview are Pastor Carl Gallops and Rabbi Seth Parat. Carl Gallops is the senior pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church in Milton, Florida. Carl is a prolific and internationally acclaimed best-selling author. He is an anointed teacher, preacher, and dynamic speaker. Pastor Carl has been called one of the top five most influential evangelical leaders in America. Rabbi Seth is the founder of Messiah of Israel Ministries. He was born in Israel and was trained and certified as an Orthodox rabbi. However, through supernatural events, Seth, Seth found the true Messiah of Israel, Yeshua, and became a Messianic rabbi. He too was an insightful author, a dynamic preacher and teacher, and he shares the message of Yeshua with a biblical Hebrew perspe perspective. And I am so proud to call these two men of God brothers in Christ and my friends. And we're <laughs> proud to call you sister. Thank you for having us. Well, Maria, so I am. Thank you for having us. I'm honored and a blessing. Well, uh, Rabbi Saf, you know, uh, this is part two. So for those of you that didn't tune in, please watch part two. But Saf, uh, Rabbi Saf was supposed to be joining us here uh, in, in our set, but because of the war in Israel, his um, flight was canceled. But we are so happy that with technology, we're streaming him in and he is here joining us, you know. So right. in, in this in, interdimensional kind of things, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a spir it's spiritual warfare. <laughs> spiritual warfare. <laughs> I mean, it really is, right. yeah. Right. So, you know, for the first part of our interview, you know, we, we uh, started to talk about your amazing book, Blood Alliance, The Attack on Yeshua's Thrush covenant and its impact on you in the midst of our prophetic times and we are living in such prophetic times and so I know you started to talk to us about uh, the um, the covenants and uh, the threshold covenant so do you want to continue or what is in your heart that you really don't want us to miss rabbi well first of all let's back up a little bit and see what is a covenant what is sure. a covenant in ancient times and in if someone was going to make a covenant in ancient times and it wasn't for a sacrifice, where would that animal be killed? It would be killed at the threshold. And so it would, it would be killed at the threshold and they would, they would, the blood would go through the, the groover. In fact, if you look at, uh, if, I think there's pictures in my book even, if you look at an ancient uh, threshold, you can see that there is a, a cup over there, like a basin, and there's a, a groover where the blood would go through. Right. And if someone was to come to your house you would kill the most fatty animal and you would step over the threshold go into that house and you'd be in covenant with that person stepping on the threshold would be showing that you're you're showing contempt for that person for the house basically you're, you're causing a fight and that's a biz biblical concept all through the bible mm -hmm. and so yeshua constantly says uh if, if you step on the threshold then you are taking the blood of Yeshua for granted. Mm. In fact, if you look at the book of Zephaniah, for example, you begin to see this threshold concept all through the Bible. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 9, it says, In the same day I will punish all those, some translations say leap on the threshold, but Hebrew says step on the threshold, mm. which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. Wow. So basically you're causing a fight. And so that God says, I'm going to punish all those that step on the threshold. Those who don't cross over the threshold, don't let Yeshua in their hearts, don't believe that he died on the tree on the cross for our sins and rose on the third day, God is going to punish those. All those that preach a different gospel, mm -hmm. God is going to punish. Now, right. again, we're not, we're not judging anybody, but we are saying that test the scripture, look at the scripture. That's why we're doing these programs. That's why we're writing these books to get the word out, to get the truth out. 
And again, only Yeshua knows everything, but there has to be a, a pattern in the Bible. And the pattern is to study the word and truth. And these Bible verses, if you look at them at Zephaniah and other Bible passages and you read, I'll punish those that, that step on a threshold. What does that mean? You have no idea what it means until you begin to understand the threshold covenant and how it ties in. How does that apply to biblical, how does biblical times apply to, to us today? Well, God, if you look at the Bible, the threshold covenants are everywhere. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, if you, even uh, uh, Aaron, which was the high priest, his sons authorized un, unauthorized fire to the Lord. And what did the Lord do? He took him out mm -hmm. because they were they were doing a you know something that the Lord didn't authorize. And so in the same way, the Book of Hebrews speaks about all those that step on the threshold. And so, how does that apply for us today? God, the the enemy wants to stop us from crossing the final threshold. He wants a different gospel. Paul speaks about in the book of Galatians, if anybody preaches a different gospel. So what's a different gospel? It's a gospel of Constantine. It's a gospel of, of the, of, that's been tampered with. That's what it's speaking about. Depart from me, I never knew you. And so those are scary words. Those are probably the most scary words mm -hmm. in the Bible. Right. Depart from me, I never knew you. But didn't we cast out demons in your name? Yeah, yes, you, you, but I never knew you. You preach a different gospel. You're, you're doing religion. I'm not looking for religion. You stepped on the threshold. You trampled on God's threshold. And so that's the concept of this threshold covenant. That's, that's and even if, you look in, uh, even if you look in Jeremiah 31, I'll make a new covenant. And it says, I'll write it. A lot of translations said, I'll write it in your heart. But the, the Hebrew says, I'll write it in your inward parts. What's the inward parts? The inward parts are the threshold covenant mm -hmm. and so the heart the heart has a has a has a, a threshold on it right right and so many translations don't use the inward parts because they didn't understand it they just wrote on the heart wow. but the hebrew says inward parts okay. in the book of revelation for example revelation 320 it says behold i stand in the door and knock right. he's knocking on the door he, he's knocking on the door of the congregation that's those are believers yeah but he's not going to knock the door down right Right. He's a courteous and loving God. Yes. He's going to come in to the threshold if you allow him in. And it says, I came in to sup with you. That sup with you is also speaking about the Lamb's Supper. Yeah. I mean, that is so beautiful. Yeah. And so, so do you want to add something yeah, to that? Yeah, I'll just take the listeners on a quick journey of thresholds throughout the Bible. Yeah. In the garden, Genesis right. 3. Uh, Adam and Eve sinned. I'm just going to make all this quick. Right. Zev writes about all oh, this yeah. in his book in detail. Adam and Eve sinned. But then what does God do to cover their sin? There's a sacrifice of an animal and blood is spilled. And then they wear the skins of the animal to remind them of the covering that God provided through the blood. That's a picture of the coming Christ. And then Jesus tells Mary, and through your womb is coming a male child who will basically, who will be the threshold covenant. In other words, he, he will crush Satan's kingdom and he will provide salvation. So we start in the garden with this concept of their, see, thresholds, we can put it in just plain, simple English. They are choices of doors through which we walk. Yes. Okay? Yes. So, so Adam and Eve had a choice. They messed it up. God provided a threshold of salvation for them, if you will. Okay? Now we get in further into Genesis. We read about Abraham. And Zev mentioned this, I think, on the last program, uh, making a covenant with God. When God, well, God made the covenant with Abraham when he said, through you is this mighty nation going to come and your firstborn will be, uh, you know, the, the one that starts it, et cetera, et cetera. And Abraham said, how, how will I know this? I just, this is too much for me to, to grasp. How can I? He said, I will make a covenant with you. And he says, go get these animals. And every one that God commanded him to get all point to Jesus Christ. Right. They all become a part of the sacrificial system of the Jews later on right. at Mount Sinai. Right. But he says, you take these animals, you cut them in half in pieces, and you lay them on both sides of a path. And I will walk through the blood. I will walk through the path. There's a threshold he's setting. And he's saying, this is the covenant I make with you. Yeah. All right. But now the most dramatic ex uh, picture of it is in Exodus 12, when God's going to take his children out of slavery 
slavery for 400 years, bring them into the promised land, take them to Mount Sinai, give them the law, give them the tabernacle, and eventually they will become the nation of Israel, through which will, be, will come the word of God, the prophets of God, the prophecies of God, the Messiah of God, the Holy Spirit of God will be given, the church will be born. All of that will come through these people. So how does he start that? With a beautiful picture of a threshold covenant, and there's no disguising it if you know what you're seeing. He says you take a lamb, a perfect male lamb, on the 10th, on the 14th you slaughter it, and that corresponds to the day Jesus Jesus entered Jerusalem and the day he was crucified on Passover. But anyway, he says you do that, and he says, and you take that blood that you have slaughtered, from the basin, it says in almost every English translation, but the word is kaf, C-A-P-H, if you will, in Hebrew, which means from the threshold. And all of the threshold, we know this from archaeology now, the ancient thresholds of the ancient cradle of civilization, even pagans, mm-hmm. in their thresholds of their doors, they have right. what's called a groover. It's just a little, a little channel. Right, and you right. would put the blood there of the animal you sacrificed, and here's how the ritual went. If you and I were making a covenant and and you were making it with me, you would sacrifice an animal, you would put the blood of that there, and then I would come to the door, knock, you would open, I would step over it gracefully, Mm -hmm. saying that I agree with this blood and this sacrifice you made. Then I would eat with you, and it usually was that animal. Right, right. And the whole thing is, like Zeb said earlier, it, if if you step on it, the the worst thing you could do would be to stomp on the threshold right. and just walk away. Right. You're saying, I do not agree with this. I will not accept this. And this is why what you're doing is so important, you, you and Rabbi Seth, because you're really doing research. You're, you're digging deep into the word. And of course, with uh, Rabbi, he knows Hebrew. He, he's been, he studied. He speaks it as he his first spe- language. Uh, and so he can dig deep dig deep into these words, into what they actually mean and not how yes. they've been, yes. um, you know, just changed through, through you translated through, through years of Christianity because now you're bringing the, these important, uh, important revelations to us. Right. And so we really appreciate that. And so you were talking about well, the, the threshold. Well, the enemy wants us to go through the, the thresholds of evil that he sets up. That he, that he says, because look at what we're yes. seeing around the world. R- religious thresholds, religious thresholds. Religious thresholds. Religious and demonic th- uh, thresholds too. I mean, when we talk, uh, think about, you know, look what happened with the uh, Olympics just recently, the opening. I mean, just it's there just getting blatant. Satan opened up another it, threshold to the whole world. It, right, so there's those yep. demonic thresholds. Another choice, and, another and this door, is, uh, another way. I mean, we see this in the world. Yes. How about, you know, identity? crisis. I mean, we see this around the world that they don't know if they're, you know, a male, female. I mean, it's that's just getting... the threshold that's been trashed. Yeah. The threshold of marriage has been trashed. The yes. threshold of the womb has been trashed. Right. The threshold of national sovereign borders has been trashed. Right. Satan is stomping around like a kid in a candy store that got stealing, caught stealing candy. Right. Now he's tearing the candy store down. Right, right. He is going out of his mind, like the Bible said. And there's a warning, there's a warning in the Bible. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. There's a warning. If you look at the, the, you know, the Bible is more, more physical, more spiritual than it is physical. I mean, I'm not saying that it's all spiritual, but if you read the Bible without spiritual eyes, it's very, very uh, difficult to understand the nuances. There are so many warnings in the Bible. If you look at the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, 28, there's a warning there. Do not move ancient mm-hmm. boundaries ancient boundaries stone set up by your ancestors. He's speaking about the God of Abraham, Isaac. He's speaking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't move those boundary stones. Don't do it. Don't move those thresholds. It's a warning. What does the enemy do? He moves the ancient boundaries. So we go all the way back to where I was in Exodus 12 and think about it. So you take the blood from the threshold and you put it on the doorposts, both sides, and at the lintel on the top. What have you just made a picture of? the cross mm, and yes. then of course the blood is in the the the, the threshold below in the groover right, so right. there's it's the picture of cross and then what do you do you go through that door and that door only you don't go into that house through a back door that doesn't have the blood or you crawl through a window only a thief crawls through another way Jesus said right no you go through that door who did Jesus say he was I am the door 
I am the way. Right. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the one that brings the blood covenant right. in the shape of a cross. They went through the door in the shape of a blood-stained cross, stepping over the blood of the Lamb, the which would later Amen. be fulfilled in Jesus Christ. The picture is magnificent. Right. And by the time you get all the way into the New Testament, you hear this, this covenant language, you get into Hebrews, and that's what that passage means when it says, look, if you once, if you tasted of the things of God, if you heard the Word of God, if you saw the miracles of God and yet rejected it and turned back, and that meant specifically to the Orthodox Jews that turned back to the law to save them, it says, but you have trampled on the blood of Jesus and you have crucified right. him all over again. What are they, what, that is direct threshold language. Trample, right. how do you trample on the blood? By the right. lamb, the blood in the threshold, in the cough, you step on it and you say, I'm not gonna right. do this, I'm right. not going this way. Then you get all the way into the book of Revelation and it speaks of the thresholds of God tearing Amen. down the Chaldean Babylonian thresholds yeah. and establishing forever Amen. the threshold of his glory and his presence. And, I mean, there is a way to cross over the threshold and his name is Yeshua. Is Yeshua. Is Ye Yeshua, Yeshua. And, and so, Rabbi, I... He is the threshold. He is, yes, he is. And so I love the way you preach. I really do. Yeah. And I know you can, uh, we can watch your, your YouTube videos because, uh, you know, we were saying, you know, in a break, you know, a lot of people will say, well, the church father said this, the sages said this, the right. say, and whatever. But you always say, and the Bible says this, right. and the Bible. So you go right to the source, right to the word. And, and so that there be no confusion, you break down those words yes. of the, in the original Hebrew language. So we appreciate that. And I know that you have a heart of evangelism and you're not afraid to go into uh, the Orthodox communities and, and uh, Muslims, and, and you go ahead and, and share. So talk a little bit about that. What is happening, you know, the, the, the climate, the religious climate right now in Israel? Well, I wouldn't say that I'm not afraid, you know. I, everybody's afraid. But, you know, <laughs> once I go in there and God tells me to go there. Well, it doesn't seem like you are when you're in well, there. <laughs> the Holy Spirit protects me. But, you know, there's always that element of I don't want to go there. You know, why can't I just go to the... You know, maybe go to the secular yeah. street, it's easier. But God wants you to go in there, so yeah. God enables you. Yeah. There's yeah. no other way to do it. And so just re recently, I went into the, the city of Nablek, where, where actually my family's from, and I grew up. And that's I, I call it a very dangerous city because really uh, the name of, of, of Jesus, name of Yeshua right there is a, is a stoning offense. They they don't accept it. They don't view the anything in the New Covenant as, as being the renewed or New Covenant. Uh, they think it's, uh, it's blasphemy. And so to go in there and to, in what they call their territory, is, is really, uh, really offensive to them. But God gives me the right words to, you know, to, to go in there and to speak with them because I, I went into a synagogue and uh, on the outside of the synagogue, one of the main rabbis that I know is from Nebrak was standing there. It just, just happened a week ago. And uh, we, we spoke about the war and we spoke about everything. And I, and I asked him, you know, what do we have to do over here to... What does God want from me? He says, well, God wants us to be righteous. And I said, well, are the rabbis righteous? And he said, well, they try to be. I say, is trying good enough? And he said, no. He was, he was kind of like contradicting himself. And so we, I got into the gospel with him and to the book of Daniel 7.13 where, where it says he's coming back with the clouds and, and only through him he's righteous. And I asked him, is, is, can anybody destroy Israel? And he said, no. And uh, I said, well, where does it say that? He says, well, God is going to protect this one. And I said, amen. So we were in agreement about a lot of things. And eventually we got to Yeshua. And this is where he, uh, he confronted me and asked me, what are you talking about? He knew what I was talking about. But he wanted to see if I would be scared to preach the truth to him. And basically he gave me his phone number and we're going to meet up. And so these kind of things are happening all through Israel right now. And the fact that I was able to go into that city and come out is only by the grace yeah, of Yeshua. And then after, after I went out of that city and, and I went out of that city, I looked at my, I, I just reviewed what happened and I said, oh, you know, I, I, did I say that? Did I do that? And it really wasn't me. It was God speaking through me. And so, that, I mean, we have to reach all people. And because of that city being so dangerous, that's exactly why we need to go in there. Because if we don't go in there, how are they going to hear the gospel? They're going to continue to mislead people. That's right. In just a That's little right. context, he's yeah. talking about B'nai Barak in Israel, yes. the most orthodox community on the planet. Zeb was raised right. there because his father, his grandfather, his great-grandfather were all uh, very 
famous, renowned rabbis in yes. Israel, right. part of the Israeli, the, the, the Orthodox courts, the rabbinical courts. Uh, right. They were dianes, or some of them were, uh, judges. Right. And, and so he goes back to that community. And it's like a gated community for Orthodox rabbis. Right. And not just Orthodox rabbis, but well-known and prestigious Orthodox rabbis. Right. So that's where he went. Wow. That's about as dangerous as danger can get yeah. in the rabbinical community to go in and preach Yeshua HaMashiach yeah. as Adonai. And uh, I agree with you, uh, Rabbi. That's the Holy Spirit <laughs> yes. with you. Yes. And in fact, he told me, uh, he said, I, do you know who I am? And I said, I, I know who you are. The question is, do you know who God is? And, mm -hmm. and he said, yeah. I can have you thrown out. I said, ah, you could, but you won't. I mean, that's what I told him. Uh -huh. Thus says the God of Abraham, Isaac, yeah. and Jacob. And he was so, I think he got scared by the fact that I'm not scared. And we give all the glory to Yeshua. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the Holy Spirit, brother. That's it. That's, that's it. A, that's God bless amazing. you, man. That's amazing. And I know in our, in our, the last time you were here, you know, and we talked about the Chaldean spirit, you write your testimony in the, first, uh, in the beginning. And you also write some of your uh, testimony in this. So I wonder for those people that didn't see, can you just give a little bit of, of your testimony? We don't have a whole lot of time, but I think it's just really supernatural when the Lord takes somebody with the way you, with your upbringing and completely has transformed your heart. And not only that, but that you gave just about everything. I mean, this is just an incredible story. So uh, I know that the Holy Spirit is with you. So if you could just share a little bit of your story. I grew up in a, in a family of rabbis. Uh, my grandfather, great-grandfather, ancestors were all rabbis, or even Dianes. Dianes means there were judges of rabbis. And so and they wanted me to continue uh, the family uh, tradition, but praise Yeshua, the curse was broken. That's what I say. And uh, I, I was one day, I was one day in a, in a, in a chat room. I, I ran away from God. I didn't want to be an Orthodox Jew anymore. I was one day in a chat room, and somebody found me over there uh, from California. It's, it's all documented in the book. And he started to preach the gospel to me. I didn't want to hear anything about the New Covenant. He, he started sharing the Old Testament scriptures with me. And I was listening to this man for four years, almost on a daily basis. And one day at... at Three o'clock in the morning, after doing a a, uh, a quest or a search, I interviewed 26 rabbis in Israel, 32 rabbis in Israel. I received 26 different answers for the same question. The question was Micah 5:2, a birth of a king in Bethlehem. And when I finally reached the main rabbi of Israel at that time, Rabbi uh, Isai Israel Lau, who knew my family well, that's how I got an appointment with him. The answer he gave me, I knew right there that Yeshua was the Messiah, but I knew it in my mind. I didn't want to accept it in my heart. He said, basically, the reason that you're getting different answers is that shivim panim la Torah. There are 70 different faces to the Torah, to the Bible, and therefore mm. you need 26 different answers. You've got a long way to go. The next night, I'll never forget, it was a cold winter night in Israel. It was a January, 3 o'clock in the morning. There's something about 3 o'clock in the morning. The Lord called my name yes. three times in Hebrew. He said, Zev, 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 Yishayahu Nun Gimel, which translates Isaiah 53, is the Messiah of Israel. It's true. At that moment, I started shaking all over. I felt electricity going through my body. I knew right there that Yeshua is the Messiah. Yeshua is God. I was born again. And from that time on, I, I uh, lost my job. I had a very good job, 14 and a half years. I lost it. I, I uh, ended up uh, losing everything, living on a street on the beach for three and a half months. Eventually, God took me into full-time ministry, and then my grandfather passed away, had a huge inheritance that he left me, uh, over $40 million in assets and money on one condition, that I would deny the name of Yeshua. The lawyer told me, nobody's here. Just sign in, go believe whatever you want. I told the lawyer, you're wrong. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is here. And he said, well, the courts are going to give away that money to your family. And I told him, that's okay, but remember to tell him that Yeshua gave him that money, and I left. And, wow. You yeah. know, but God, God opened the door and blessed me, put us in full-time ministry. I'm jumping really fast, but you get the whole uh, account in my book, and, and, and it's quite amazing to give all the glory to, to Yeshua, Jesus. We're small people with a big God. 
it is supernatural. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's amazing. So I do encourage uh, uh, our viewers to read your books because they are really wonderful. And of course, your books, uh, Pastor well, Carl, are also awesome. You know, we interviewed you a couple of times on a couple of these books, which were uh, Yeshua Protocol and Glimpses of Glory. You. And you have a new book that's just coming out. Yes, it's I already see, available in audio form. Uh, uh, oh, I, I'm I sorry, see, I interrupted you. No, no, no. I, and so if you could just like in one sent a uh, couple of sentences, tell us what that book is about. I never say about. anything in a couple of sentences, <laughs> but I will. But we okay. love you. I'm yeah. a preacher. Yeah. You know. But no, the title of the book is Eyes to See. August 15th is the scheduled release date of this year. Um, and, and it basically is a, is a sequel to Yeshua Protocol, but you don't have to have read Yeshua mm -hmm. Protocol, but I do refer to it a few times in that book, and, and it's all in context. You can read either one separate or just read one if you mm -hmm. want. But well, what I'm doing is I'm showing you magnificent revelations of God's Word, of science, of archaeology, of history, how they tie to God's Word in these last days and only in these last days. I also talk about what happened on October 7th. Yes. I take you on a journey all the way back through the Scriptures to show you the connections that are unbelievable and they're coming out of mouths of current leaders and they don't even know what they're saying. Yeah. And I show yeah. you all of that. I show you the latest uh, 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 science and DNA, the latest. I go to the first word of the first verse, uh, Bereshit. Yes, 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 uh, yes, and, yes. And I put, and I show there 11 Hebrew words that are there yeah. that form a sentence that tells the whole gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ. And the Apostle Paul duplicates it in his writing to the Word. Amen. And I oh, show all awesome. of that. And so it's called Eyes to See. If you eyes have to eyes see. to see and see this, you know there's no other book in the world, yeah. no other Savior, like the Word of God and Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. 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 Yes, I, I'm I'm sure the book is spectacular, like all your books. Well, Rabbi Sef, thank you so much for joining us, and we love you, and we miss you, and uh, yeah, next time you're in town, just give us a call, okay? <laughs> and, and so um, our, our time is up. Our time is up. And so thank you so much uh, for being here again. Uh, and thank you, our viewing audience, for joining us again. And please continue to watch our program. You, will, uh, you can watch us every day of the week somewhere around the globe. Watch past interviews on our YouTube channel. And uh, don't forget to subscribe by subscribing. Uh, you know, you'll help, help us spread the good news even more. And if you want more information, uh, visit my website, VoicesInTheWildernessTV.com. Uh, you can uh, call me at 877-991-4800. My email is mariagoldstein7 at gmail.com. And friends, remember, Yeshua loves you. Ask him into your heart. You know, ask him to be the Savior, your Savior, because he is the way, the truth, and the, and the life. So until next time, uh, I wish you shalom, shalom. Yeshua loves you, and so do we. So, um, yeah, open up your heart to him because he is calling you. Today is the day of salvation, my friends. Shalom, shalom. Amen. Shalom, shalom. Thank you Thank so you. much for having me. Messianic Rabbi Zef Parad will be taking you on a much deeper dive than you've probably ever previously experienced. In Blood Alliance, you'll come to understand the true nature of spiritual warfare like never before. You'll uncover the biblical truth about long-held traditions that still assault God's truth and His grace to this very day, throwing massive doctrinal confusion into almost the entire modern Christian church world. Finally, learn the truth about the temple on the Temple Mount and what the Old Testament and New Testament clearly lay out for the last days. Shocking surprises await you. This truly is a life-changing book to the glory of Yeshua, Jesus.